today, I want to talk about how an investigation into the tokenized stock manipulation is finally happening. I want to talk about exactly what's been said to these hedge fund managers and what the plans are in terms of going after them. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, unusual Wells tweet is saying, Justin, FTX's tokenized shares are now under scrutiny for stocks like AMC and GameStop. It says the custodial firm had not held stock for and on behalf of FTX for the last year. And reports are that short sellers could redeem AMC tokens for actual shares or short actual shares and use the tokens as false locates. This way they didn't have to pay a high borrowing fee and could legally short synthetic shares if there was no real shares available or no real shares to locate. As there was no real shares to locate, these market makers were instead locating these AMC tokens or using these AMC tokens for the locates for those short sales. Basically facilitating these hedge funds to short hundreds of millions, if not billions of AMC and GameStop shares because they could simply locate the tokens instead of locating real shares once they'd exhausted all of the real share availability. And now it seems the Justice Department has told bankers to confess their misdeeds to cut better enforcement deals. The CNBC article says the Justice Department recently overhauled its approach to corporate criminal enforcement to incentivize companies to root out and disclose their misdeeds. The carrot that justice officials are dangling before the corporate world includes a promise that companies that promptly self-report misconduct won't be forced to enter a guilty plea. It says banks and other corporations, so not the individuals involved, just the companies related that proactively report possible employee crimes to the government instead of waiting for them to be discovered, will get more lenient terms. This basically means the underlying employees and the underlying hedge fund managers will end up going to jail, but the companies themselves won't suffer a significant fine. Now, I personally would love to see Citadel not receiving any fines whatsoever, but instead seeing Ken Griffin himself going to prison. We all know these fines are simply a speed bump that companies don't care about. Therefore, if companies aren't receiving fines, it doesn't really make any difference to us. But if the individual employees and hedge fund managers are actually going to jail, it makes a massive, massive difference. It incentivizes lower level employees to whistleblow because it won't damage their company individually or the company that they're employed at. Just simply send some of those more senior positions to prison. It says banks specifically do have a high burden for enforcing anti-money laundering and other legal and regulatory requirements, but they do have a lengthy track record of failures, often due to unscrupulous employees or bad practices. It's not necessarily the companies themselves or those lower level employees that are the problem. It tends to be those hedge fund managers that are deciding the specific unscrupulous activities. And this is exactly why Jeremy Frommer has created CEOBlock.com. He tweeted saying 500 of you have signed up to CEOBlock.com, including 10 individual CEOs that he has spoken to. So CEOBlock.com has been created to put an end to naked short selling. And so far he's received 10 actual CEOs of publicly listed companies that have signed up to his services and have signed up to be a part of the movement. And he said at 100 CEOs, we will take out a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal and list every individual CEO and company that's suspected of being naked shorted. And he said, when all of these CEOs stand together, I assure you the regulators will hear us and bring national attention. As Christopher Cox, the 28th chairman of the SEC, has previously said, illegal naked short selling is an especially serious threat to smaller public companies whose relatively thin market capitalizations can be more easily manipulated. And in the same way, it threatens the savings and investments of many retail investors in these smaller companies. Therefore, it's not just going to be us individual retail investors standing up against these hedge funds. It's also going to be the individual CEOs of these companies themselves. And obviously, these individual CEOs can make a lot more noise and bring a lot more attention than just we can do on our own. And that is why John Stewart has also spoken further on the manipulation and has decided and publicly stated that Citadel will become the next FTX. Talked about earlier, the general tenets of the corruption that exists between our government and the markets and all these big players, you could substitute out Lehman, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ken Griffin at Citadel. I mean, mm -hmm. how is this different than Ken Griffin running a hedge fund at Citadel and also being the most gigantic market maker that we have? Yeah. And who's the biggest donor to all kinds of politicians? Right. It's Ken Griffin. I mean, 
the markings for corruption are all over our system. But they want to point to this as it's an anomaly. Obviously, we know that FTX was a hedge fund or Almeida specifically was the hedge fund. FTX was also the market maker and Sam Bankman-Fried himself donated significant amounts of money to the Democratic and Republican parties. And therefore, Sam Bankman-Fried, FTX and Almeida Research is exactly the same thing as Ken Griffin and Citadel. Citadel also has that exact same levels of corruption and therefore it's not far-fetched for Citadel to become the next FTX and end up going bankrupt. I've previously spoken quite heavily on how much Citadel right now is struggling. They're selling off their assets, they're selling off portions of their business, and Ken Griffin is taking proactive measures to register his assets overseas and in other people's names. And if you didn't know, Sam Bankman-Fried was doing the exact same thing. Sam Bankman-Fried was buying assets in the Bahamas and also registering them in his parents' and employees' names. And therefore, it seems like Ken Griffin is more alike to Sam Bankman-Fried than many of us first thought. And interestingly enough, the Bitcoin Archive has also tweeted saying breaking news. The FTX founder is now under investigation for market manipulation that led to the collapse of Terra USD and Luna to the benefit of FTX and Almeida Research. Now, obviously, it was speculated, and I say speculated with those air quotes because there was quite a lot of actual factual research that proved or suggested at least that FTX caused the downfall of Terra and of Luna. And now it's not just a simple suspicion circulating on Twitter, Sam is actually being investigated for exactly that. It says federal prosecutors are investigating whether Sam Bankman-Fried and his hedge fund orchestrated trades in a way that led to the collapse of two cryptocurrencies in May. It says US prosecutors in Manhattan are examining the possibility that Mr. Bankman-Fried steered the prices of two interlinked currencies, Terra USD and Luna, to benefit the entities he controlled, including FTX and Almeida Research. And interestingly, it says representatives of the US attorney for the Southern District of New York declined to comment. Now, obviously, they have to decline to comment because of the ongoing investigation that is actually taking place. Considering Ken Griffin and Sam Bankman-Fried are becoming more and more alike than we first thought, I don't think it'll be long until Ken Griffin himself is being investigated for the manipulation of two stocks, AMC and GameStop. That I think really would be the perfect end to all of this, with Ken Griffin himself being investigated for market manipulation after some lower level employees finally blew the whistle. This obviously would mean that Citadel itself doesn't necessarily face huge fines and the lower level innocent employees also don't face giant fines, but Ken Griffin himself ends up going to jail. Now on top of that, Dylan LeClaire tweeted this chart of the 10 year, two year treasury yield spread and said, Houston, we have a problem. Every time there's a negative drawdown or a negative spread between the 10 year and the two year, it seems to immediately be followed by a recession. We can see back in 1988, 1989, there was a negative 0.5% 0 spread between the 10 and the two year, which was then followed by this gray block, a recession. Again, back in 2000, 2001, we saw a negative 0.6% spread between the 10 and the two year. And obviously what followed that was the dot-com crash. We saw a smaller inversion between the 10 and two year between 2005 to 2007, which yes, was smaller at negative 0.25%, but did last longer and was obviously followed by the 2008 recession. Right now, the current inversion is actually significantly larger than all of those previous inversions down here at negative 0.8%. 83%. The last time it was this low was back in the 70s and the early 80s, where we basically had two back to back recessions. And it wouldn't surprise me if the exact same thing is going to continue happening over the next year, where interest rates will be raised until the recession happens and then swiftly and dramatically cut again. And that's why Spence also tweeted about BlackRock's recent activities. He said BlackRock has been unloading longs in the past six months, including AMC, which I assume is to afford its premiums on their short gamble. This article says that BlackRock has frozen hiring and has also reduced spending. Clearly right now, BlackRock is in a very sticky situation. BlackRock's revenues have fallen quite significantly by 15%. Obviously that is just revenues and I'm expecting that profits actually fell even further. If BlackRock continues burning cash and ends up unprofitable, it wouldn't be long until BlackRock also ends up insolvent. And obviously if BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager that owns pretty much 100% of many companies in the S&P 500, ends up insolvent and bankrupt, it would be a disaster for the economy and a disaster for the stock market. 
BlackRock are already having to cut costs left, right and center and freeze hiring. It clearly doesn't show a good sign for their cash management and for their overall profitability and survivability. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.